history information a little bit later as well. Uh, but welcome. My name is Michael. I work for Early Learning Ventures. Uh, we're a shared services network um, that was based in Colorado, but now we're a little more national. Um, and so we are doing this presentation um, in partnership with the uh, Wisconsin Early Childhood Association and uh, the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network. I'm guessing you all are a little more familiar with them than with us, but we'll make sure that um, you know we sort of get you on going through this. And what we're gonna be talking about today is about technology in the early childhood education field. And uh, I know when I usually say that in person, I tend to have people either react to like one of these two pictures is either like, oh yes, this is gonna absolutely change everything I do. I'm gonna get, it, get rid of all that paper. It's gonna be wonderful. Or I also get, uh, you know, the grimace of, oh man, there's already so many new tech requirements in this industry. Most of them don't work. And that's why I feel this talk can be really important, um, you know, from this kind of nonprofit angle of not trying to sell you things, but just be like, here is what is available on the network or out there. This is what people like. Because honestly, technology is the same as everything else. Most of the time it's helpful. Sometimes it's frustrating. You know, in fact, just to share um, a little bit of like my morning, we had an exact perfect example of this, of uh, Zoom. So, uh, basically, Zoom was down for three hours this morning, so we didn't know if we'd be able to do this webinar for a little bit, so the grimace face, but, you know, we're all here. I'm able to present to you from my living room as you're in your living room, and that's just wonderful, so the other side of the coin. Now, one thing that is important for today, and you're going to hear me go back to it several times, is uh, this nature of shared services. You know, many of you are probably already a part of the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network. But maybe you're not, maybe you're unfamiliar with what shared services is. So I actually want to start uh, with a little interactive that is also going to help with the technology conversation. I'm going to introduce both sides here. Uh, it's been something I've been doing for a while. Um, but basically, what I'd like you to do is I'd sort of like you to just sort of sit with yourself for a moment and think about your admin uh, for your center or for your family child care home. And what I want you to be thinking about is the administrative tasks that uh, take you the least amount of time. You know, the thing that like is never really on your plate for like worry. It's just something that you're able to do, get it out there, you're good. And I also want you to, I'm sorry, but I want you to also think about the other one. The other side of the coin, the thing that you have to do every month that you just abhor, you dread that day, but you have to do. Um, I've tried to break it down into six categories. So uh, billing and invoicing, children and family files, enrollment, staff files, subsidy, and parental communication. So again, if you wouldn't mind just sitting here for about 15, 20 seconds, I'm sure you have it popping right in your head the thing that you absolutely hate to do. Um, here, usually when I'm giving this talk in person, I have a board up. Uh, and people, I give out stickers for people to put what they think is best and what they think is worst. Because we don't have that today, what I would really appreciate you all doing is, uh, again, in the chat box, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing your best and your worst, and please put which one's best worst. And uh, we have a couple of moderators that are going to be watching that just to give the overall glimpse. So um, I'll give it a moment or two for you all to be typing in. And because uh, I can see a couple answers are starting to funnel in, because we're not really able, I'm not really able to show you that board that showcases what the room is like. What I did is uh, I have a couple of those old sheets that I have given out. So I just counted them up across a couple different uh, versions of this training that I did. And this is what we had. We had a very even mixture. Um, you know, you do see some trends of uh, filing being an unfriendly task or as parental communication it tends to feel like something that people are really good at. But what I really wanna highlight in this is everybody has a lot of different bests and worsts. You know, it tend, I think you tend to get in the frame that everybody's dealing with the exact same issues you are that's not always the case. It could be that you do amazing at billing, but you know, the home provider that's across the street is terrible at billing, but is great at the thing you're, you know, not as successful at. And that really ties into the whole concept of shared services. 
you know, if we were all one industry, you know, one organization, one industry, we'd have that home provider who's best at billing be handling billing. And we'd have, you know, you, if you're best at staff files, be handling the staff files. Everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses. You know, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. And so, yeah, we're talking about this from the provider level. Um, but, uh, you know, actually, sorry, actually, before I dive into that, I do want to just share what the room is feeling. Uh, Chanel, I know you've been watching yeah. the chat. Would you mind sharing what it seems like? So it looks like most people are feeling that they are the worst at billing and invoicing or files and the best with parent communication overall. Okay. And that, that runs pretty similar uh, to what we tend to find. Um, you know, they're, you get little shifts each time you do that, but that does seem, you know, with the large population size, it is from a data perspective going to match our trend. So that's lovely. Thank you, Chanel. Um, yeah. And so Chanel is, is one of the um, workers at uh, Wisconsin Early Shared Services Network, Wisconsin Early Childhood Association. Um, and so to go back to that shared services, you're all doing the same thing. You're all doing it slightly different ways. Some of it's working really well for you. Some of it's not working great for you. That's why these networks of providers is so important. And that's what shared services is. So uh, basically in Colorado, uh, we have a network of about 300 providers that use our system. Um, and we delineate information we hear. Uh, we have providers tell us what's working, what's not. We distill that out to people. And that's exactly what you have uh, out in Wisconsin as well. Um, there is going to be a segment of today's talk where we're going to have um, uh, Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network chatting about what is available to you all. Um, but it is just a wonderful support network. You're able to hear what other providers are doing that can be helpful. And this is all actually also what tech is. I mean, tech is like, oh, you're really bad at that thing? Well, hey, this organization created this thing that is specific to that. So um, I wanna go over just a little bit what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, so first, brief introduction to myself, cause you're like, all right, you know, this is like a 27 year old male. Like, why is he talking to us about childcare? Uh, just so you know, I actually have been a childcare provider in the past. I'll get to that in one moment. Uh, and then I'll be talking just about technology in the early childhood education field as a whole. Then we'll be diving into childcare management systems specifically. Uh, that's my expertise. That's what our organization does. Uh, and that's also sort of currently the end all be all for tech in this industry. And then finally, um, if we have some extra time, what we'll be diving into is some of the other fun technologies that are out there. We'll be uh, talking about, um, you know, the platforms available to you in Wisconsin. And then, you know, as I mentioned, we have this network of 300 providers in Colorado. They're telling me what works, what doesn't. So they're telling me about other tech they're using. So I've sort of collated the things that came strongly recommended and add them in. They're, they're for much like specific narrow things you might need. Okay, but me. So um, yes, I was a child care provider. I, I was caring for uh, six juveniles. And uh, basically I had an issue around tech because I kept not being able to find where they were. Um, but what it turned out is they were being carried off by bald eagles. You're like, all right, well this, what? Don't worry, they were ospreys. I was caring for ospreys. And there's not much you can do when a bird takes down another bird. But um, that's actually where I got my start in another field where it's like, okay, you have this thing that isn't very congruent with data or with technology, but all those things are going to help. So how can we do that? Um, and so that's actually, you know, what my background is, is around basically wedding um, technology with things that might not at first glance feel like uh, would be a benefit to technology. Uh, just so you know, I did actually have a couple of my birds survive, but uh, most of them bald eagles got to, which is still a sore spot for me years later. All right, so technology. You know, we, uh, you know, maybe, maybe not. You sometimes feel like children might be um, a little bit like your ospreys where they're running all over, hard to keep track of. I'm sorry if that's the case, but uh, I wanna just talk about tech and EC specifically. So as we know, uh, tech in every industry tends to specialize uh, as it goes through. And that's what we're seeing in the EC industry. There's a lot more options around a lot more different parts of, tech, of the field. 
what you're also seeing, you're seeing uh, trends that are pushing the market more and more towards tech. Uh, and that's coming from both sides. That's coming from the, uh, you know, the state group sides. Oftentimes, they're trying to get more things online, everything like that. But it's also coming from the, uh, the demand side. You know, parents these days, a lot more of them, millennials, you know, and, uh, or the generation that's like, oh, well, I'm not going to eat at a restaurant unless it has a four on Yelp. So um, you're seeing these trends push towards it. And what I do want to highlight before I continue, I know I'm going to be talking about tech. I'm going to be talking about our tech. I don't always feel that you have to have technology to run your business. It's just there to help. It's there to help with those admin pieces that you feel you're worst at. Um, you know, and so I've talked to some providers. They've been doing this for you know, 30 years. They have a system that works perfectly for them. Maybe it's not for them. But I would just really appreciate you all keeping an open mind today as we sort of walk through this. All right. I don't think it's any stretch of the imagination to say that, um, you know, in talking with hundreds of providers around that providers feel overburdened and under-resourced. You know, there is more to keep track of than ever before, uh, and there's only the same amount of time in the day, and so it sometimes feels a little overwhelming. And compounding on that, a lot of good intentioned groups or people, they have resources that they know that can help but they're just sort of tossing at you. And I know this is a, a field where you have, um, you know, not as much capacity as you might want on the time side to learn these things. And so what you see is you're, sometimes we're having resources thrown into this industry, but they're just bouncing off because the training, the support isn't always there. Uh, and this is actually backed up by data. So um, a, a study, it's been updated a couple times. This is just the one I, na I grabbed um, by NACI, the Fred Rogers Center. They basically looked at the uh, amount of access to technology, specifically computers, um, and how that corresponded to usage. And what was found from this uh, you know, study where they just gave it out, you know, the little blurb right there, it is clear from this report that early childhood educators require more professional support to enact technology in the classroom. Exactly. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of you on the call that are going to be able to take something and just run with it. But if something isn't working right, I know you all don't have, you know, maybe that extra 30 minutes to be like, okay, I'm going to focus on this because you need to go work with the kids. And so that's, again, a, a central tenet of um, shared services. It's trying to make sure that best practices are being created so that when you get these technologies, you're able to, you know, more simply use them. And so that's why, you know, one of the tenets that I like to do is it's not just the provision of resources, but it's also the provision of support to make sure that it is implemented successfully. And that brings us to child care management systems. So I have just a couple of logos up here. This entire screen could have just been logos covering each other up for seeming rows and rows and rows and rows. Uh, there are tons of child care management systems out there. Um, I've I'll be highlighting some of the ones with the largest market share. Um, but before I get into that, I should just explain what they are. So, child care management systems. Since tech is specializing in, in many ways, one of those things is around, you know, data management and things of that sort. And that's what a child care management system is. It's data management specific to child care. Um, you're seeing more and more providers using child care management systems, but it's still estimated that at most only about 30% of uh, child care programs are using it. Um, you're also seeing, you know, if there is tech being used, sometimes it's not a pr program tailored specifically for child care. And it might be, you know, a couple extra hoops to jump through, while, whereas child care management systems, they are built specifically for child care uh, providers. And so what they help with, they're going to help with day-to-day um, -day things. So for instance, uh, electronic sign-in, um, I'll be showing an example in a moment, but like right now, you know, with all of the health rules going on and everything like that, uh, we put out an ability to do touchless sign-in where um, a parent scans the screen and that acts as the sign-in. Um, that way, you know, there's less touching and all that. Um, these systems also help with the more of that administrative side. So um, from looking at the at lo looking at the chat as uh, Chanel had shared earlier, this seems like something that um, a lot of um, you all here today feel like is a bit of a struggle for you. 
Um, and so the cool thing about these billing systems is it's not just like a ledger and you keep track of the ledger. These things are meant to automate the systems. That way you're able to spend more time with your kids and less time with the admin side. So, you know, we built the system. So it's like, hey, payments are due or payments get sent out to parents on this day of the month. Payments are due by this day of the month. And if they haven't paid by this day, that's now past due. And if it is past due, we can build in some logic that's like, okay, it's an additional X percent of your amount or $12 or anything like that. And you can catch all of these things. You know, uh, one, just to go on a quick tangent, something that I've heard, because um, home providers is where I got my start. I was working directly with home providers for a long time. Um, a lot of them were sharing with me basically that, uh, you know, the late pickup. So kids are supposed to be picked up at five. And so I, ha I had a provider tell me, okay, so what I do is I have a black pen out all day. But as soon as it switches to five, I switch my black pen out for a red pen. That way, if they sign them out without me noticing, I'm gonna be able to notice that, hey, you know, you picked up your child 10 minutes late. So these kinds of billing systems, because they are also working with those day-to-day -day processes, what you could do is have it built in. It's like, okay, I'm gonna give everybody 10 minutes after the child is supposed to be picked up as a bit of a grace period. But then every five minutes after that, every one minute after that, it's an additional, you know, $5 or $2 or whatever, because this is my time. This is my business and we're extending those hours. So that those are a couple examples, some easy ways that um, you can have billing automate to maximize income and also make sure that billing is running smoothly. Um, and finally, on the other side, parental communication. Uh, that is, you know, a lot of these things can also help with marketing and pieces like that. And that's actually why I have this next slide, uh, the misnomer, because really when it comes to child care management systems, I strongly feel that it really breaks down in two main categories. Um, so you have ones that primarily focus on the administrative side of child care. Um, so that is going to be the things like billing, record keeping, staff filing, all that. That's very much where we sit, um, so ELV. Um, a couple ones that maybe you're also familiar with, ProCare, uh, which is a large center, lots of centers use it. Uh, KidCare, which was uh, built by Tom Copeland. It focuses just on expense reporting and on um, food program management for home providers. And then you have the others. So you have the marketing focused ones. And these are the ones that are more focused on that demand piece. Uh, so Brightwheel, you might know it. They were on Shark Tank. They're sort of the biggest of these categories. Um, you also have, uh, you know, Wonder School. We'll get to that in a moment as well, where they maybe don't do as much of the market. What they do is um, like setting price points for you and like creating a website and being more of that like front face. So you have a lot of different ones out there. They largely do the same thing. What you're seeing right now is everybody is trying to compete to do the same thing. Um, but the ones that fall on the administrative side are typically better at the billing and uh, filing and all that side of it. The ones that are on the marketing side tend to be better at the parental communication. Okay. I'll be talking first just about the uh, administrative system side. Um, so something that one of my uh, home providers is actually, so the, uh, the picture on this slide that's actually uh, from the provider who said that. She uh, basically was able, that's all of the files that we were able to just consolidate into a system. And what she really liked about it is it made her feel more professional, both on billing, because she was billing with um, family friends, which can you know, be more of a struggle and hey, you're past due. So having a system just made her feel a little more professional, took away some of that um, you know, conversation anxiety. Um, also, you know, does online enrollment, so it just felt more professional. Um, so we see it, with our system, we're able to look and we see that there is a major decrease in licensing violations around paperwork um, from before using a system and after. Uh, just in general, better record keeping. I'll show you why in a moment. Um, and then I'm still, I'm working on a long-term data project since that's sort of my thing about uh, how much providers are saving by using billing modules or how much um, you know, they're increasing. But uh, that's a little hard to um, quantify always. So I did have a center of a license capacity of 60 let me know that you know, switching from their paper method over to uh, an electronic billing was saving them or was earning them about 1500 additional each month. 
Uh, very quickly, just to run through some of the functionalities of these systems. Again, this is going to be both really on the parental communication and the administrative side. Everybody tries to do the same thing, um, but you got child and staff sign-in, billing, immunization tracking, parent and staff communication, reporting, staff filing, and then all kinds of record keeping for compliance. So, um, you know, I'll be showing you an example here in one moment, but just, uh, I know sometimes this is just a lot of words to throw at you all. So um, basically it can help with a lot. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run through some of the advantages of some of the largest systems out there. I'm of course going to start with my own. Um, <laughs> so in wetting some of the uh, initial slides of this talk, so being a shared service network, we really focus on the relationship building aspect of all this. We want to make sure that if somebody is using our system, that they're using it in a way that they know and understand what to do. So um, we do a lot more client support uh, than everybody else. Our little mantra is if it's gonna take you two minutes to figure something out, to just call us instead. Um, we actually, we met with home providers last year uh, just to make sure that you know we were being um, good stewards for them. And what they let us know is, hey, you know, the typical hours of eight to five when you're open, that's when we are, um, you know, in care. We can't always talk about this. So we shifted our client support so that we're available 12 hours from uh, central time. It would be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So <laughs> we have trainings done first thing in the morning, right after, any time of day. Uh, the other advantage we have, and this is going to be something that um, our, our Wisconsin partners on the call are going to be sharing more, is that we are uh, collaborating um, with your shared services out in uh, Wisconsin. That's going to open up um, some more opportunities, um, you know, more resources, just really getting that kind of hub feel. Um, however, just the kind of person I am, kind of organization we are, I do want to make sure to just you know, blanket you with many of the options out here. So um, I pulled four of the largest uh, market share um, child care management systems out there, uh, just so I can talk about some of the advantages that you have with those. So um, first, ProCare. So they have um, the biggest market share. They were sort of the first child care management system um, in the late 90s. Uh, and what they do is they do like module based um, things. So it's like they can do everything, but you're only going to select the things you want. Um, the user interface is quite old is the negative I've heard. Uh, the positive I heard is if there just tends to be more people that have like some kind of background in it. So, you know, if you are, um, you know, having turnover or something, sometimes that's easier. Kid care. So uh, I'll be talking about Tom Copeland near the end of our talk because I think he is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful resource for uh, family child care home providers. Um, and so what KidCare has an advantage of, one, it is really cheap. It's like seven or eight dollars a month. Um, most of these others out here on the low end are like $25 a month up to like 50 or 75 a month. Um, but what so KidCare is cheaper, and they focus specifically on the um, accounts billable for home providers and on uh, the food program process. So um, we have a lot of providers um, out here in Colorado that basically use that specifically for that stuff because they have all of their other administrative processes down. So um, do want to highlight them. And then uh, another one, which... Um, uh, will also be um, coming to Wisconsin. Maybe some of you have already heard about it. Uh, Wonder School. So they are sort of uh, you know a new age version of these uh, child care management systems. Whereas they they really have more like a uh, Airbnb style backend where it like tries to tell you what you should be um, you know pricing for that area. Um, you know, and they like can provide tools to build a website. So there's some things that are different about them from others. Um, they're sort of new to the field, so I don't have a total grasp on them like I do some of the others. And then Brightwheel. So if the parental communication is what's most important to you, um, to you know, highlight what Brightwheel does better than what we do, I'm happy to share. Um, so with Brightwheel, it's uh, you know throughout the day you're logging, hey, this child received a diaper change at this time. This parent or this child got this food at that time things like that that are sort of uh, in the moment. And then when the parent checks them out, they get the report of uh, what came back. 
So that's um, a pretty deep, comprehensive version of that side of it. Um, where I do hear um, the negative I do hear about them is more on the, like just on the support side. Um, but if you're able to like understand it, a lot of people like that parental communication piece. Um, so I tend to recommend that maybe out to homes that have the administration side all down, but maybe struggle with parental communication. All right. So I know that that is a lot of information about these without really getting a, a good sense maybe exa of exactly what a child care management system is. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be diving into a quick demo of ELV's child care management system. As I mentioned, a lot of the basic functions, which I'll be highlighting today, are pretty standard across all of these. Um, and it's really easy to schedule a deep dive with any child care management system. Um, in the post webinar message, you'll get some information about how to do that with me if you want to do that deep dive. But I'm just going to show you some of these basic functionalities to help you gain an understanding. So I'm going to stop my sharing my screen for one moment just so I can then begin sharing inside my web browser. Perfect. Here we are. Okay, so first I'm going to be just showing you uh, what parent sign in sign out looks like. Uh, you can see that little QR code on the left. That is actually um, that touchless sign in piece that um, I was sharing about earlier, where basically um, with our system, parents have an app. They come in uh, with the app, they scan that QR code, and it's going to take them to this next screen. Obviously, I can't do a webinar both on phone and on computer, so we're going to set that aside but everything works the exact same way on these next steps. Uh, so if you're not doing that, what you're doing is you have any kind of uh, like tablet or laptop or desktop or something pulled up with the screen. Parents come in, everybody uh, who is allowed to pick up or drop off a child has their own unique sign-in code. That's how this acts for compliance as a signature. So they're gonna put what their code is and they're gonna hit child check-in. You can also do staff check-in, but I'm just gonna focus on kids for this takes them to the next screen. Um, so I actually checked in my grandkids earlier today. I'm Grandma Judith. Hi. Um, I like, just for my fake center, I like to turn on this alert section that like showcases to the parents what's coming due according to our records. That's not something you have to do, but um, yeah, no, they just punch in the code and then you just hit this check in or check out button. So I'm picking up the kids. So that's it. That's all that sign in is. And basically these screens is what comes up on your phone if you're doing the touchless. But um, this is pretty standard across the industry about having everybody have their own unique code. Um, there are some out there, like there's this one easy care, very expensive, but what they do is they do a biometric scanning. So it's like a fingerprint that actually does a signature. So nice little uh, future, <laughs> but um, most, um, like us just do a code. So that's what your parents would be seeing with the system on a pretty day-to-day -day basis. Um, the other side of the coin, you know, I mentioned that we're an admin side. There's a lot of these admin programs out here. That's where I'm going to be signing in now. So when I log in here, uh, I get greeted. Okay, so this little thing, the last chance, this is, we like being a shared service network, we want to make sure that we get, um, you know, important information about ways to get income and stuff out to providers. That's usually not there. Usually you get greeted by this. And I know this is a lot. It's a lot for me. But the reason it's a lot is because I'm an absolutely terrible fake director. I don't think I have updated any of my information in two years. So I am like flagrantly <laughs> um, non-compliant in a lot of areas. And that's what this is letting me know. Hey, you have things that are coming due or that are already overdue in this category. Um, so usually what it is for most of our providers if, is if they sign in, they might have one or two or three of these pop up. I just have tons. So um, another piece that can be easier um, that uh, we sort of mentioned earlier um, enrollment was one of those categories. Uh, so with online enrollment, it's basically you just need one email per family, or you can embed a link that, you know, they can click on on your website where they are going to uh, start filling out the information for you. And what they're going to be filling out is all the information um, that's required by licensing. 
Now my little demo account is based uh, in Colorado. So it's gonna be about Colorado licensing. Um, this is the cool thing about working with WECA uh, and having that Wisconsin partner is we're getting more and more pieces all the time being updated specific for Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, so it's all the information required about the parents, all the information required about who's allowed to pick up and drop off. So Daisy shows up here. So the system knows that, hey, Daisy needs to have her own unique sign in. And then uh, the information about the child themselves. So, you know, what, what allergies do they have? Everything like that. Uh, the compliance pieces, all of these work pretty much the same. So um, I'll, for just for quickness, uh, use inspections as the example. So here's the ones I have saved, but let's say I need to make, um, you know, we had an inspection today. We're gonna add a new one. Uh, it was a fire department inspection. It was today. Uh, this one's important. This is how the system can alert you that you're flagrantly past due like me. Uh, so when does it expire? And then you can fill out as much of this rest of this information as you want. So it saves that record. And then there's a uh, place to upload your like actual hard copy. That way it's mirrored. Um, it's tied to this record. And so, um, yeah, it's super easy peasy. There's a lot more to these systems. I just wanted to get you into here. That way you could see some of the basics. You know, we have some parental communication, billing, the reports is really big. Before I jump back to um, the presentation, there's just gonna be one little thing that I wanna talk about. Um, and this is actually, again, just because of the person I am with data. I love scheduled reporting. So we have a ton of reports in here that are uh, built um, that you can just pull whenever you want. But there's a lot of things in childcare that's just like sort of a consistent basis you might want. And so what schedule reporting is, is again, let's automate the generation of these, send these over to you. That way you don't have to like, is there something I needed to do today? So you can use this, you know, two ways. Uh, well, a lot of, lot of different ways. I was just gonna use two examples. So like, if you wanted to get what payments did you get this week? We could say, hey, I want to run this every Friday at the end of the day that way. Uh, and I want, you know, for this week. So if I run this, then basically every Friday at the end of the day, I'm going to get my weekly report over how much, uh, you know, money we got registered in our account. So I can just sort of, you know, easily run my budget or something. But you can also do this with a lot of other things. So the piece that I like to talk about as well. So this child immunization due slash overdue report. If I was, I can set this so it runs on the first of each month. And what this report does is it looks ahead 30 days, sees if anybody has an immunization coming due. Then it looks backwards, sees if anybody has an immunization that's overdue. I can set this up, come to me in Excel, because I like Excel, and I want it on the first day of each month. If I save this first of each month, I'm gonna get this report. If that report's blank, it means my immunizations for this month are like up to date, out of sight, out of mind. If they're overdue, or if somebody shows up, then I know who to talk to. So this was some examples of specifics, um, both of our uh, child care management system, but really also a lot of these things are gonna be consistent um, across systems. So with that, I'm going to uh, stop sharing on um, this. Uh, if you do end up wanting to dive in uh, deeper with other things, as I mentioned, we will share that later on. So I am going to um, begin sharing the presentation again. There we go. And I believe Paula, if you wouldn't mind uh, just sharing a little information about Wisconsin specifics. Hi everybody, I'm Paula Drew. I am the co-director of the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network housed, it's a program of WICA. Um, some of you have heard of us, um, as a new program at WICA, and likely most of you um, have some reference to WICA. Um, but essentially what this program is, is it's uh, a network that connects individual family group and after-school programs together to share staff, we share resources and expertise in order to gain greater efficiencies of time and money. So currently we're fully operational in Vernon, Monroe, Lafayette, Iowa, Richland, Grant, Crawford, Dane, and parts of Milwaukee. 
Um, and what, uh, when I say this, we, we come together as a network to, um, to capitalize on some things. I'm gonna tell you what those things are. So I mentioned shared staff. Um, so that is a substitute teacher pool. Um, so we hire and train um, staff members to be substitute teachers across the network. Um, and then providers within the network can use that one um, shared substitute teacher pool so that you're not constantly cycling through folks. Um, we help with the acquisition and um, utilization of technology. So everything that Michael is saying, we help programs find a technology solution that works for them. And we work with them, handholding them um, so that they get to a point where they feel fully comfortable using it and it becomes just a part of their operations. Um, we also facilitate bulk purchasing um, of anything that is of interest across the network. So, and within the pandemic, it might not be purchasing necessarily, but we are a nice entry point for donations. So just last week, we received a large donation of hand sanitizer um, 720 half gallons that we were able to distribute across the network. So um, we sort of just facilitate bulk um, purchasing and or donations and get them back out across programming. Um, and then one of the things I, I think is um, most, of, uh, most utilized and, and likely gives you the most bang for your buck is sort of um, on-site or via Zoom during the pandemic, uh, business coaching and mentoring in which um, one of our experienced staff, so everybody on our team is either been in family childcare and in group programs that you're gonna work with. Um, and, and we help look through your policies, we look through your budget, we help you set goals and figure out how to get there based on um, what you share with us about your program. And we do that on an every other week basis, we meet with you. And then we also um, coordinate partners within your community um, from other fields, the business sector, medical, um, even houses of worship who care deeply about early care and education but don't under, don't know like what that entry point is to support folks. So we sort of facilitate um, stakeholders within your community and, and help them understand um, what your greatest needs are and how they might be able to help support you. Um, the bottom puzzle piece there, it says Wiser Platform. And Michael, if you wouldn't mind moving to the next slide. So wiserece.org um, is an online resource platform that everybody in the state has free access to right now, whether you're in um, one of the counties I mentioned for Wieson or not. Um, we made this available, freely available to everybody through the pandemic. And it is an it's sort of like an on how, online clearinghouse of best practices for our industry. So there's everything from in-classroom tools and templates to marketing, budgeting, and HR resources. And everything that's on this platform is vetted by national experts in the early care and education field. There's templates that you can download and use for budgeting, for marketing, for label making, for classrooms. There's some really great resources for family engagement, um, all sorts of what's um, what's the current regulations for anything HR or tax related. There's a whole family child care toolkit that's wonderful. Um, and also what's more within the platform, what's embedded in there is a hiring um, platform called Acquire for Hire. Um, Michael, would you mind moving to the next slide? And what this is, is it allows child care programs to post jobs for free um to top hiring agencies like indeed um, it gives you it gives you possible uh job descriptions so say you're hiring for an assistant teacher it's going to say here's what um a full job description for an assistant teacher could look like and you can use that as a starting point and change it um, it will say how much um folks within your region um are offering for this position um, and then when people apply, no matter where they're applying from, all of the applications come back into the site and you can see them all um, in a really nicely organized list along with um, their attachments of their resume, um, letters of recommendation. And if you have a number of people that are going through um, 
to look at candidates, you can actually rate them within there. And so that's really nice if you have a few people. Um, and it's free. Uh, we use it at Wika. That's actually how we've hired like every new person we've had. Um, and you can also use it to send form emails to folks either welcoming, they, welcoming them onto the next round or politely saying, I'm sorry, but you don't meet our qualifications. And that's just another, um, that is another benefit of using the Wiser Easy Shared Resource Platform. And when anybody posts a job on here, there is a link for Wisconsin Early Childhood Education Jobs. Anybody who posts a job on here, also that job shows up on this link. We have it on our website. And um, in addition to childcare programs who use Wiser, um, anybody with a Teach scholarship also has a free membership to this. So folks who are just coming into the field, um, and so they can look there and see jobs posted just for early care and education in Wisconsin, which I think is really wonderful. And that's all I have. That was a lot of information. Yeah, thank you for that, Paula. I, I think it might um, be important. Before I go into the uh, last um, stretch of this training, I want to highlight uh, some housekeeping notes. So uh, first, I know I don't, there's probably a lot of you on here who are wanting, you know, registry credit for this. So if you have not already, please make sure to uh, include your name and your registry number in the chat box. Um, and that way, Chanel, who's on here, she is sort of registering everybody as we go. So um, please make sure to do that. That way you get credit for this. Um, a couple other pieces that I do want to highlight again. Uh, so as Paula mentioned, um, the Shared Services Network is free to join. So um, I, I hope that, you know, through this presentation, you've maybe learned just a little bit about Shared Services and how uh, these kinds of things can basically, it's just like, hey, somebody else that is connected to a lot of people that can sort of guide you with the specific things you're struggling with. I mean, trying to put it as simply as possible, that's what it is. Um, I also want to highlight, uh, you know, so the partnership between uh, ELV and WECA. So um, we love working with groups like this. And what's cool is um, we'll include in our post webinar messaging, but, um, you know, we are one of the technology options for uh, Wisconsin providers. So um, if you join the Shared Services Network, you can out, not only is that free, but also um, if you are wanting child care management systems, uh, ours would be free um, and we would do all that training, all that support as well. So uh, about an hour after this webinar ends, you are going to be getting um, that post webinar messaging. That's going to include a couple things. It's going to include a link over to Chanel um, in case you're interested in either the Wiser platform or in the Shared Services Network as a whole. Uh, it's going to include uh, contact information from me if you would be interested in, uh, you know, taking a deeper dive of this, uh, of our child care management system, or if you're interested in, you know, leveraging that um, Wisconsin connection to have that um, for free. And then we're also going to include uh, links for um, both all of these slides. So I apologize, I should have said at the beginning in case anybody's hurriedly jotting down notes, you're gonna get all these slides with all the words on there. And then it'll also include um, a recording of this in case you're wanting to go back and watch a specific part. So yeah, lots of uh, housekeeping notes, there's more coming. And then if you have not, I see more and more people are doing it. So I'm just gonna call it out one more time. To get registry credit, include your registry number and your name in the chat, and we have moderators taking care of that. Okay, last little part of this training is just other useful technologies that I've heard about filling specific needs in this industry. First one is, uh, this is actually cool. So um, this is from uh, the vice president of the Colorado Association for Family Child Care. Uh, she is like up to date on just everything all the time. She's one of my favorite people to talk to in the industry. Um, she basically uses Mile IQ in order to track uh, all of her mileage and that way she can get money back for that. Um, basically what it is, is it's like a GPS thing that it's turned on on your phone. You go and do the ride, it can sort of tell when you're in the car based off speed and stuff. And so it logs like each trip you take separately. 
And then, you know, once a, she does it once a month, um, she pops in and she says, okay, this was a house trip. This was a business trip. This was a business trip. This was a house trip. Um, and then, you know, that helps her with taxes. She gets the report of however many miles she went. And so she actually allowed me, she drives quite a, lit, a lot, is worth mentioning, um, but she was able to sh have me hop in. We were able to calculate um, that two years ago, she saved about $1,700 um, via on taxes for mileage via this, and then it was $1,100 um, last year. I don't have any ties to any of these um, things I'll be speaking on during this last part. Um, this is all providers that I talk to in my network having shared these uh, tech options with me. The next one, ah, not two, next one. <laughs> all right, expense tracking. Uh, so there's several of these out here and this is where um, I, it's not something that I use personally, so I'm just highlighting a couple of the ones that providers have used. So I had one that was recommended from a couple home providers in Colorado Springs. Uh, they're all using this thing called Neat Receipts. Uh, it scans the document receipts and then you're able to, you know, it, it says like, oh, this was the date, this is the vendor, all those little bits of information. Uh, and it puts them into specific cells for Excel or QuickBooks or HR Block or whatever you're using. Um, and so, you know, that way it's like, you're not having to track down, oh, where was that receipt? I know I spent like $200. You know, it's just like scanning it, getting into a document. So that's the one that I got directly recommended from providers. And then when I did some digging into this expense tracking thing, the thing was is uh, neat receipts didn't get awesome reviews online. Um, but again, it's like anecdotal recommendation versus like online recommendation. That's why I wanted to include them both. Uh, the other one I got was Shoeboxed. Um, and so it's a little more expensive, but it also does uh, both the receipt tracking and that mile IQ side. Um, and then it also allows for that same kind of thing. It scans the receipts, puts them into the right form fields for Excel. That way you're not having to do a bunch of entering. So both of those are out there. But I know uh, so far with these other tech options that I've talked about so far, those are all expenses. Um, and so I really wanted to make sure to include some free options out there. Usually I like to talk about uh, the resource platform for the state, but luckily we had Paula share. So um, again, definitely leverage that. Okay, Bright by Text. So uh, Bright by Text is really cool because what it does is it basically sends uh, text messages at certain times and it's targeted for a child developmental stage and then each one of the texts you get they're going to have a little link that takes it to an outside source and all these outside sources are going to be heavily vetted so um you know it's from like pbs vroom which is i'm, I'm about to get to um all of them just sourced accurately and so this is awesome both for sometimes a provider, but then it's also for parents. It's one of those maybe additives that you could tell a parent in your uh, care about. You know, maybe they're sometimes a little unsure about specific things and this can help because it's again targeted to the developmental stage. Um, so it's really cool, it's free. Uh, again, you're gonna get a copy of all these slides. So if you wanna look it up later, go for it. So. I mentioned Vroom. This is one of the places where uh, Bright by Text sources their uh, links out. So this is um, Teaching Moments Everywhere is sort of uh, how they brand themselves, which is what it does. Uh, I don't know about you all, but in talking with some home providers, I've heard about you know parents that sometimes feel guilty about um, not being able to always contribute to the uh, learning, uh, the teaching of their child. And so that's what Vroom is trying to help with. Again, it's also free, uh, but what it does is it provides resources um, for parents and providers on how to maximize learning, uh, no matter what time of day you are, no matter what you're doing. Like, uh, you know, when I dove into it, one of the things was about bath time. How can you turn bath time into a learning opportunity? Uh, it's English and Spanish. There's a mobile app, it's free. Just sort of another one of those cool things out there I like to recommend. Two other free ones, one of them super in-depth, one of them super light. <laughs> uh, so the first one, the super light one, I just like including this one just because I've used it, it's fun. Uh, Storyline Online, they just take all the classic children's stories, they get a celebrity to read them and then they animate it. It's just nice and fun. I've had Oprah read to me at the end of the workday, it's nice. On the other side of it, if you're needing like 
more intensive. Uh, I don't know why I put these on the same slide. They're so opposite. Um, PBS Learning Media. This is another one of those places that Bright by Text gets their information. I really like this website because what it does is all of it is standards aligned. So it shows you, you know, what standard for Head Start does this match up with? And it's pretty much all free if there's going to be a cost. It highlights it in the materials pretty quickly for you. I don't know if you all can see that on the Mindful Bodies and Awareness of Attention and Breath one. Um, but yeah, it's just a whole bunch of interactives, just a whole bunch of things that you can use to supplement uh, whatever your current curriculum is. Okay. On the more administrative side, I think pretty much everybody on here is a home provider. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend checking out Tom Copeland's blog. He is sort of a wizard around uh, family childcare homes and uh, more of that business side of it. So I highlighted just two examples, you know, can I count, count hours spent mowing my lawn, lawn? And what records must you give parents? It has everything. There's a lot of coronavirus resources on there. Um, also, by the way, just on the on the resource platform that uh, Paula talked about, there's a lot of um, time pertinent information there as well. Um, I, if I was to direct somebody just to like two informational things, it would be your state's resource platform, which in your case is Wiser, and then it would be uh, Tom Copeland's blog. Um, he is actually sort of one of the people that helped build that kid care, that child care management system that only focuses on accounting and uh, expense reporting. Um, and he's just a veritable wealth of knowledge. So he has a website and a Facebook. So pretty easy to find. All right. So earlier I, uh, I talked about how on the introduction to child care management system slide, how you could just have a bunch of logos. This, the number of logos that I could do for curriculum and assessment tech would absolutely dwarf child care management systems. There are so many curriculum and assessment techs out there. Uh, a couple of the ones I have highlighted here, so Funshine Express, that's actually just because every year I go to a, a shared services conference and every year uh, somehow my booth is right next to Funshine Express's booth. Um, so <laughs> I've learned way more about them than everybody else. Um, talk to them while you all are in your uh, trainings. Um, it was originally built for family and child care homes. So um, I have a lot of providers out here in Colorado, home providers that are uh, using it. And so it um, focuses on that side. Uh, if anybody here is Head Start or Early Head Start, one of the uh, gold standards, pardon the pun, is Teaching Strategies Gold. Uh, this is one of those examples where I've heard that, you know, it's really hard to gain like an understanding of it at first. Like there's, you know, that hurdle I talked about, throwing resources and it falls off sometimes. Um, but if you're able to make through that learning stage, people just really love it. It's just getting over that first hurdle. Um, one of the assessment texts that's actually on going to be on Wiser and is on a lot of the resource platforms is Cognitive Toy Box. Uh, rather than having it be an assessment where the provider writes it down, it's actually handing, um, handing a child a tablet, and I know that has different feelings in the industry, uh, and they go through and do a game-based uh, little thing, and it actually calculates the assessment for them. It's by, um, this woman came out of uh, Yale, and she, it's pretty cool. But yeah, Dozens and dozens and dozens more. Okay, because we're short on time, I'm probably gonna just skip reminding Class Dojo because there is a part of this that I want to do every time. Basically, just very briefly, it's just allowing for uh, communication between parents and providers without having to use your actual telephone number. And a lot of it is gonna be housed inside child care management systems anyways. Okay, this is the part of the presentation, I know I only have like four minutes left, where I would love to hear from you. I want to know what apps, what resources, what technologies you all are using. Um, I know you, <laughs> I know we can't speak, um, uh, but we will have um, slides with all of this. And you are so just you're going to get a link that has all the slides, and you're going to get um, a link to this presentation, the actual recording of the presentation. But please um, share in the chat what you're using if you're using anything specific. And, um, you know, so while I'm sort of uh, allowing this to come in, I'd really like to thank uh, Paula um, for um, having me on here and letting me speak with you all. Um, 
and then I'd also, Paula, if there's any last minute things you'd like to share before I start to run through what some of the other people are using. I think you did a great job, Michael. I actually have a bunch of notes of apps and um, things that I didn't know about that I'm excited and uh, as I'm sure Chanel's done the same. So uh, thanks, this has been really wonderful. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate everybody's time um, today. I know how, how precious it is and I hope you feel like you've learned a lot too. Thanks, Paula. Yeah, so usually I love doing this in person because I like if, you know, I have the providers share what these are. Um, I'm just going to run through um, and what we're doing is we're saving this chat. So I really thank you all for sharing because I'm going to take these and just see if I can't keep building on my presentation based off what others are sharing. So we have Flipgrid. We have somebody that's using a combo of kid care and bright wheel. We hear a lot of that where kid care is being supplemented on top of another system. Uh, ProCare Cloud, Google Meet, you know, a free way to meet. Uh, I do want to plug, m my dad is a software developer. He works for 8x8. They have free, um, they have a free video platform as well. Daily Connect, haven't heard of that one. I'll have to look into that. Same with Ready Rosie. Uh, there's Remini, uh, an Israel app. In the past, they used Brightwheel and hopped off that. Kid Care, Mother Goose Time. Mother Goose Time is one of the other big ones that's used um, around the curriculum side. Uh, Baby Connect, it's for uh, parent messaging and daily sheets. So that's gonna be more of that um, uh, like daily communication piece I talked about. Uh, Child Care Sage for billing and children files. Uh, somebody is using the Remind app. Genius Scan. Uh, by the way, another there's a free app called Scannable that, which I'm guessing is doing the free the same thing where it's like not everybody has a scanner where you maybe you need to upload those kinds of things. So these apps just do a quick scan and make things easy for you. Uh, Shutterfly Share, which you know sharing pictures. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, into it. A lot more things. Um, so I am basically out of time. Uh, Chanel, have you copied the entire chat at this point? Because basically once I end the uh, presentation, it all just floats away into the nether. So everybody who has put their registry information in, it has already been entered into the registry. So I actually do not need the chat. Okay, well, I do. So I'm going to copy it really quick, <laughs> just so I can go and look up all these things um, that all of you have graciously added for me. I, I really appreciate that. Um, again, you know, just to close out the presentation, that is sort of the exact example right there of what shared services is for. It's for communal sharing of the things that are making your life easier. 100% on that one, Michael. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna close it out. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I would expect about 30 to 60 minutes from now, you'll be receiving uh, that post webinar message and just one final time, what's gonna be in there. You're gonna get a link to Chanel in case uh, you want to sign up for the free shared services network um, or for the free Wiser platform. You're gonna get a link to me if you'd like to do that deeper demo um, because as I mentioned, uh, basically, Alliance Core, which is our child care management system, uh, would be free for a year, um, thanks in, to our partnership with WECA. Uh, and you're also going to get a copy of all of these slides in case you want to go back and look at anything specific. And then if you know you heard one of the names right at the end but aren't sure, um, you'll also get a link to all of this recording. So with that, thank you, everybody, and I'm going to be closing it out. going to wait for a minute oh. to get um chanel did you get debbie schultz email uh she's already been added to the registry okay credit um so good. if you log into the registry you can look and see events that you've attended and get a certificate that way yeah yeah i just wanted to make sure she seemed she wanted to make sure that i her director must have registered for this but then she's the one attending yep so only the person attending gets the registry. I chatted with her earlier. Okay, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> I yep. figured you did. I just, before we close out the chat, I wanted to make sure that, um, that we got that. We got it. Awesome. And yeah, also, if you do have any registry questions, uh, please ask Chanel and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's right. entered. Perfect. Love that. All right.
Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Okay, thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.